It's late afternoon on a sunny, wintry day. You are in the kitchen of your little cottage. The fire in the hearth is raging and crackling. The heat comfortingly makes you feel relaxed and almost doze off as it throws out a beautiful, oaky, smoky scent. Your familiar Balthazar is sprawled out on a grey and white furry rug that looks similar to a wolf's pelt. Every now and again, he stretches out fully before returning to his former position. Through the small lattice windows above your white butler sink, you can see the snow thick and heavy upon the ground. The sun is low and bright and causes the snow to twinkle in places against its light. The sky is the clearest blue and you know the sun will fully set within the hour. You are sitting at your large, terribly old oak table that you inherited from a long line of ancestral witches before you. This table has experienced the making of many a meal alongside the drying of herbs, making up of tinctures and salves and the odd spell and that's just within your lifetime. For now though, it's just you sat at the table nursing a hot pot of tea and reading an old book. You pour out the last of the teapot's contents into your teacup and add a dash of milk from a small jug. Absent-mindedly, you stir your tea widdishens with a teaspoon, book in hand, reading intently. As you let go of the spoon, it continues its stirring motion, a favourite party trick learnt from one of your favourite witchy aunts. You concentrate on your book on flowers and fauna, admiring the beautiful illustrations of butterflies and herbs, taking in the text, explaining their various uses when you hear a loud tap, tap, tap against the window. The spoon stops its stirring motion. The cat leaps up on all fours, poised, and you turn quickly to see a raven. It can't be. Could it be that raven? It's been over a year since you last experienced his presence and took that trip into the woods. That would have been two hours past if you cast your mind back. The raven taps again frustratedly. Tap, tap, tap. You already know what he is here for. You make your way towards the window and watch the raven carry out the same actions you remember before. He starts hopping around in the garden again, waving his wings around, doing all in his power to gain your attention and stopping to look back at you. Your herb garden this time round is covered in a thick blanket of snow. All the shoots and roots covered with snow and waiting for the promise of spring. You grab your thick, warm, black woolly coat, lace up your boots as quickly as you can, grab some thick mittens and a huge scarf and make your way towards the kitchen's heavy wooden back door. Heaving it open with all your weight, whilst Balthazar slinks out to join you and see what all the commotion is about this time round. You take the big iron key out of your pocket and lock the back door tight. Turning back, you see the raven looking intently at you. If you didn't know better, you might think he was asking you what took you so long, and this makes you smile. You raise your eyebrows at him, curiously waiting for his next move. He responds firstly by promptly cawing at you and then hopping off down the garden towards the white picket fence gate 
leading the way. You crunch through the snow, laying fresh tracks down and push the gate open, which proves tricky with all that snow. You follow the raven as he makes his way towards the forest. The trees are particularly bare now. The sun is getting lower. Balthazar trots alongside your feet. And every now and again, the raven stops to look back at you to make sure you are coming and he continues on his journey. You enter the forest. The trees are dense and the sun's shining brightly through the branches. You can smell wood fires again, but the scent seems to be carried on the cold air from ahead of you, not from back towards the cottage. Out of the corner of your eye, you catch sight of the odd animal. Squirrels manically scarpering up trees, not used to people walking these paths. The sound of bird song above you is enchanting. Still following the raven, you spy up ahead a clearing. It's still far off in the distance. However, you can make out movement and an orangey, red, flickering fire burning bright. Balthazar's tiring of the journey now and you watch him turn to you before disappearing off into the forest, making his way back to the cottage, his domain. You're hesitant to follow now. Unsure of the movement ahead, you start to slow down, trying to make out what you can see in the distance. The raven stops, hops towards you and does his mad, flapping wing dance once again, cawing even louder. You ought to continue. After all, he led you to no harm last time. The sun is still shining for a good 40 minutes or so. You still have time to reach home before the cloak of darkness fully descends. The raven continues to lead you towards the fire You can now make out the fire emitting from a large black cauldron type vessel. Three women are around the fire, two sitting around the circular stone pattern on the ground, one is tending to the cauldron. You come close enough now to make out small details in relation to their appearance and what they are wearing. You hesitate and the raven moves towards the chattering free women. It's their turn for him to hop and call at them now. The women acknowledge the raven. He even lets one pat him on the head gently before they turn to you. Ah, here you are. We've been expecting you, dear girl, speaks the first of the old crones dressed in a long purple cloak with a hood that covers some of her long grey locks of hair. She smiles at you and you frown and smile at her greeting. Come sit with us, dear girl, by the fire. We sent Odin to come and meet you to bring you back to this sacred spot again, speaks another one of the crones, this one wearing the green robe. All three smile at you and wave to you to come and join them. Crone in the black robes wraps a blanket around your shoulders, whilst the crone in the green ladles some hot liquid into a small cup from the saucepan that's being warmed over the cauldron and hands it to you. Here, mug walk tea, that'll warm you up. You take the tea gratefully. Despite the unexpected appearance of the free women, you feel safe and in good company. It's good to have you back here again. We remember your first trip to the forest. You frown and nod. You don't remember anyone else being here the last time you were. But you're just taking everything in. And it's strange because every time you've tried to return to the same spot Odin the Raven brought you to since that day, 
you've never been able to find the stone circle again. You sip the hot mugwort tea, careful not to burn your mouth. You must wonder why we've brought you here, dear girl. We are the weird sisters of the woods. We see all that takes place in these woods. This is our hallowed space here. We sent Odin to bring you here upon this sacred day. Whilst you are here, fellow witch, join us now in our ceremony upon this winter's day. You see, I am the witch of the past. I can help you let go of anything you need to, making it part of your past, be it habits, beliefs, or people. Whilst you sit here and drink your tea, consider that which you want to let go of. Have a moment of silence and dig deep into your heart and soul and see what intuitively comes up that you know you must let go of. What must you sacrifice in order to move forward? I invite you to sit quietly for a moment, witch, and contemplate. You open your eyes and the crone of the past asks, ready? To which you nod. She hands you a leaf and an ink pen. Write on this leaf for me exactly what you wish to remove. Focus on what you are letting go of. Understand that sometimes sacrifice can feel messy, uncertain and sad at first, but our higher self always knows what the right path for us is. As you write on the leaf, the writing begins to glow shiny black. When you are done, the crone guides you over to the cauldron and you throw the leaf with its writing into the cauldron. The crone in the green robes puts her arm around your shoulders and guides you to take a seat once more. I am the witch of the present. I focus on the here and now and making the most of the here and now. I can help you understand what it is you want to do in your daily life, be it small rituals, experiences, anything that can make your day-to-day life more magic. Whilst you sip on your tea, take a minute to close your eyes and ask yourself if you are living life how you would like to daily. What or whom would you like to connect with? What do you love doing that perhaps you could do more of? What do you need to do more of that you aren't? Sit with me here, witch, and contemplate for a moment. I invite you to sit and contemplate your present situation. What do you love doing that you could do more of? What do you feel you need to do more of for perhaps your own well-being or happiness? You open your eyes and the witch of the present hands you a leaf and an ink pen and this time you write on the leaf what you would like to do more of in your present. The ink comes out in a shiny glittering green 
as though the writing has come to life. The Witch of the Present smiles and nods at you and you walk over to the cauldron thinking on your intentions. You cast the leaf into the cauldron. You look to the crone in the purple robe. Why witch, you must know by now I am the witch of what's to come. Take this opportunity to consider what you want from your future. Think beyond your wildest dreams. Don't play it safe. After all, you have the influence of us sisters here to help these intentions come to fruition along with your own power, dear one. Close your eyes and think clearly on what you truly want. I invite you now to spend a few moments contemplating exactly what you would like for the forthcoming future, what seeds you would like to plant. When you're ready, open your eyes. The Witch in Purple hands you a leaf and ink pen and you write on the leaf all that you wish to call into your life. This time, of course, the ink is shining. The writing is subtly moving in purple. You make your way to the cauldron and release the leaf into the cauldron. The three crones make a circle around the cauldron, each of you standing at one of the four quarters, north, south, east and west of the cauldron. The three crones begin whispering rapidly and it gets louder and louder until you hear them speaking clearly the following incantation. The energy feels intense and raised and you try to pick up the words they speak to recite along with them. We witches join together now under this sunset, a liminal time where we stand in between the past, present and the future. We join here now to observe both the death of the old that no longer serves us, the reignition and nurturing of all that we hold sacred to us, and we welcome the mystery of all that we wish for. And so it is, so might it be. You speak this incantation three times together with the witches, eyes closed, casting your mind upon all you wrote upon the leaves. Once the words are spoken, the three crones begin to chuckle and laugh heartily. Cold, red cheeks smiling, the witch in purple pours out more mugwort tea. You notice how dark it's starting to become, and you feel slightly concerned about making your way through the woods alone. The witch in purple takes a small lantern from the ground that sat aside the cauldron. The witch in green brings over a stick she is located and proceeds to hand it to the witch in purple. They light the candle within the lantern and hand it to you via the handle. For you, dear girl, don't worry. Odin will make sure you get back safely. It's time for you to make your way back home. I'm certain our paths will cross again. 
you thank them smiling you feel very grateful and strangely connected to these three women so much so you feel sad to leave but next thing Odin's there cawing the crone in green patting him on the head and she utters some words quietly to him you cannot make out Odin hops ahead of you cawing at you profusely you giggle and the witches smile you wave them one final goodbye and by the flickering light of the lantern and Odin guiding the way you turn to make your way through the woods the light of the fire and the chatter of the witches behind you begins to diminish the further you trek through the woods Odin does his job impeccably ensuring you safely make your way out of the woods crunching through the snow until you find yourself at the woods periphery looking out across the land you spot your cottage with smoke billowing out the chimney from the warm hearth that's waiting for you you thank odin and you could swear he nodded his head at you before he takes flight cawing as he goes By the light of the lantern, you make your way back through the thick carpet of snow towards your picket fence, walking along the hidden path of your herb garden, covered in snow. The kitchen is illuminated through the window by the hearth still burning bright. You take the big iron key out of your pocket as Balthazar meows and takes his way out of the shadows, weaving around your ankles as you turn the big iron key to unlock the huge, heavy oak door. You and Balthazar make your way into the warm kitchen. Your nose and cheeks are bright red with cold. You remove your mittens, boots and coat and fill the kettle up before putting it onto the agar to boil for a nice cup of tea. A few minutes later, you're sitting nursing a fresh cup of tea alongside a delicious piece of carrot cake. In that hour, it's like all and nothing has changed in equal measure. Balthazar is stretched out on the grey and white rug in front of the fire whilst you sip hot tea and read your book. Nevertheless, this is another day you'll never forget. And who's to say when Odin will come tapping at the window again, asking you to join him on another adventure in the woods?